Welcome to The Flight, a consumable curation of champions and catastrophes that is considerate of your chronometer. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris from the Retro Hangover Podcast. And as always, I'm with the Dick Dragon himself, Shane Kosky. And we are here to give you a flight. Shane, what is going on, man? Oh, you know, the usual. I'm I'm I I, I like that we are just so casual with the, the Dick Dragon moniker now. Like it's the the flight is like such a such the antithesis of the the normal episodes. It's just like we we come in like a twisted metal character just screeching in into the into the station and then like this one is just like yeah and here's the dick dragon. <laughs> welcome welcome to the dick dragon except i'm not doing it as loud <laughs> no no we gotta save that for the other stuff i think for the next episode i'm going to do it in the straight up npr voice oh and yeah, just get like uncomfortably get some... close to the microphone yes oh my be, god that reminds me. holy shit yeah. i don't want to like derail this episode too much but man like i i've been i've been watching some twitch lately and uh, mostly because both uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 and uh, MXC have 24-7 channels on Twitch now, which is fucking fantastic. Uh, but I was like, you know, poking around in like these suggested channels and stuff like that. And I came across this one ASMR channel. And listen, like no shade to anybody who's like actually really into that ASMR stuff. Like if that does it for you, like more power to you. Holy fuck, that was so awkward and weird, like stumbling into that and seeing some chick with these two very specialized microphones on either side of her and just slurping into it at the highest what? volume. And I'm like, what is this? Yes. Yeah. That's the whole stream. That's the whole stream. She was she was in a cat girl outfit and she was just right up against the microphone, like licking it and making slurping noises. And that was it. That's the whole stream. I'm like, I, I feel like I shouldn't be here. Like this, <laughs> like I feel like I walked in in the middle of something that I should not have walked in on. It was just, it was strange. I don't know. That has nothing to do with this episode, but you just made me think of it. And I was like, Jesus, I don't know, it, man. It makes me, it makes me think I need to become a VTuber, up the pitch of my voice a little bit, and start blowing my microphone for money. I think I, this could yeah, work. Sure. Why not? I mean, I love it. You know, it's, I guess this this podcasting thing hasn't hasn't blown up or anything. So I mean, fuck it. You know, <laughs> we're bigger than we were. We we're bigger than we were last year, and we're grateful for that. So thank you, listeners. Yes, for yes, listening to I our guess. podcast. Thank you. Whatever. No, no, no. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, but I do think you brought up a good point because watching Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Uh, would be a fantastic thing to do on a sick day. Oh. And that's what we're doing today is we're talking about video games. We are. We would play during a sick day. And this topic was nominated and selected by our patrons. So thank you, patrons. So if you're asking how we came to this topic, that's how. And you can also nominate and vote on topics if you go to our link tree, linktr.ee slash retro hangover and click on the Patreon link. Or you can just go to patreon.com slash retro hangover and you can join in the voting and nominate in our Discord, which is all part of all of that. So for games to play on a sick day, I think we'll start out with you on this one, Shane. Mm. So... uh. What 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 is a game? <laughs> Let me start that over. <laughs> what, what is, is a game? game? A miserable pile of coronavirus. <laughs> uh, what is a what is a game what? that will be on your sick day list? All right. Well, let me let me preface this first before I jump into my first one. That this topic felt a little up for interpretation, and so the way that I went with it, and I told Chris this before we started recording, was. I decided that I was going to take this to mean games that I played when I was staying home sick from school, like as a kid, because to me, that feels more interesting than like something if I just like called out from work now, I'd just be like, yeah, I don't know, I'll probably still fucking go play Elden Ring or something on Steam. That's not Never entirely happens. interesting. So, no. so that's where I'm going with this. Anyway, on, on to number five. Number five. 
So the 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 number five spot for me, and these are in somewhat of an order, um, is Gauntlet Legends. So you're probably going to notice a theme here, and that is pretty much everything in my whole list is Nintendo. <laughs> because as most of you probably know, if you've listened to the show for any amount of time, when I was a kid, I was we were pretty much a 100% Nintendo household for most actually all with the exception of the you know the master system and and being the first console but outside of that we had nothing but nintendo consoles so that's going to be the theme for pretty much all of it but gauntlet legends for the n64 um i put that one on here because it's just a really easy one to get into it doesn't really take a whole lot of thought it's fun and you can ostensibly you could beat the whole thing in a pretty short amount of time. Like I I'd say an afternoon, but it actually would probably take less than that. Um, and it's something that my brother and I played a lot together. So, uh, that was usually one of the ones that if I was just like staying home sick for the day and I just wanted to throw something in and just play something while I was sitting there feeling achy and my nose running or something. Um, this is, this was probably a pretty solid choice for me. What about you, Chris? We, we need to do a Gauntlet episode, Gauntlet Legends episode at some point. I mean, we have it covered. We did do Diablo and Diablo 2, but, you know, maybe it might be more <laughs> proper to go with Gauntlet Legends at some point. I, I'm down for it. All right. For me, my number five. Uh, and by the way, not a single one of my games is on a Nintendo console. Well, at least how I am selecting them for this. Mm, okay. So my number five is EA football games. NCAA or Madden. I'm just going to say EA football games because I, I would link them together, as I've said on the mainline episode sometimes. I would start off playing NCAA, creating characters to recruit to my team, which would typically be Northern Illinois, graduate them. And then after about 10 to 15 seasons, I would migrate over to the Madden for that year and draft them or trade for them to put them on my team or compete against them as I did in NCAA, whatever. Uh, that was something I would do. It would be a lot of time, too, because every single game that you'd play would be about an hour long. So you would play your game that would be about, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, then go through the options menu, which would be about another 30 minutes, depending on how much you wanted to customize, and then play it again for another hour. As I said, it's Romance of the Three Conferences part year, uh, like Romance of the Three Kingdoms. It's just it's a big time strategy game. Yeah, it requires a little bit more skill. Uh, than than thought really but there's there's that to it as well so that would be something i would just you know lay back in bed and play some ea sports games and mo just mostly football because that was the sport i was into i never really played hockey sick even though i was into hockey for a couple years uh, before i left for the navy so yeah it's it's that and uh specifically for the ps1 and ps2 i will say that that's why i said no nintendo games so there's my number five. Back to you, Shane. Number four. So that's that's interesting that that was your pick uh, because it's it's actually very similar to to my oh. number four. Uh, so you said that you somehow surprisingly didn't do this, but I did. So I had NHL 94 <laughs> for the Super Nintendo. There it is. And uh, <laughs> I played a lot of NHL 94 for the Super Nintendo um, to the point where I figured out a strategy that you could basically cheese the AI over and over again. And I would end up with games like exhibition games where the scores would be like in the double digits, like it'd be like 30 to two or something. So that was fun. Uh, also, you know, just doing like the whole season with the Stanley Cup playoffs and everything. And so, uh, yeah, this was another one that was really easy to just kind of throw into the old console. And uh, so, yeah, so that's that's my number four. So my number four is Warcraft 2. Mm, it's a good pick. And the reason why is this was before the Battle.net edition. I, I was playing this before Battle.net edition was out. Mm -hmm. But I did have access to the internet. So I think I had it was called M-I-C-Q. I might be wrong on the uh, letters on that. So whatever the program is with the flowers, that was an alternate to AIM that was just had a little bit more capabilities back in the day. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would do. I had this guild back then. I, I, it's hard for me to describe it as a guild, but 
you would upload your own custom maps and then you would defeat custom maps and then you'd upload back into the guild through ICQ the that you defeated them and you get rankings and you get people that were underneath you that would they would gain points too. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's really hard for me to describe briefly, but because of that, like that was a game I would sit down and I would just play Warcraft two for hours. I would do a custom map against the computer or I'd, I'd play it in campaign mode, uh, especially once uh, what's the expansion called? Tides of Darkness. Mm-hmm. Uh, once Tides of Darkness came out, it was just a game I would play over and over and over again. It was the perfect sick game because I would just get used to it and I just like building up my units and zug zugging it against humans and I had a great time. Unless I was humans and I just like building a bunch of elves and just uh, shooting arrows at you know orcs and shit and that whatever is... the eagle characters were. I love I love Warcraft too. Yeah, I I think they're hippogriffs if I'm not mistaken. Hippogriffs, whatever. Um, yeah, <laughs> whatever Harry Potter. I yeah, care. right. Um, no, but that's actually super fascinating to me. I was not aware that that whole like DIY kind of guild sort of system was a thing that people were doing then. That's like, that's crazy, but also like really cool. Yeah, it was, uh, I'm sure it was incredibly niche and I couldn't tell you, it was all over like hotmail sites, by the way, too. (laughs) Hotmail, not hotmail sites, GeoCities. Uh, Like everything was done over GeoCities. It was, I look back at it now and I I have no idea how I figured that out. as like a 12 year old. Yeah, that's, (laughs) that's nuts. I don't even know how you found that. I don't either. So what's your number three? Number three. All right. So coming in at the middle of my list, um, we're, we're bouncing back over to the N64 for Ocarina of Time. Mm. Uh, yeah. So I've said this a few times on the show. Ocarina of Time is one of the few games just games in general, but even specifically one of the few, actually one of the only, the only, now I think about it, the only Zelda game that I have played through from start to finish multiple times. Um, I've, I know I've completed Ocarina of Time at least half a dozen times, possibly more. Uh, and part of that is just because it's like, you know, we've, we've all had this discussion before of how like, when we were kids, we only had, you know, so many games available to us. Um, and so we just played what we had and we played them a lot. I mean, it's the literally the only reason that I'm good at Contra 3. Like, uh, <laughs> that's it. It's just because I played the shit out of it because I didn't have much else. Um, and the same kind of applies here. Uh, but this one, so because I was just so familiar with how the game plays and everything that happens all the dungeons it was a really easy one for me to just throw in the n64 and just like start a new save file um and even if i didn't play all the way through that's fine um but just even playing through like you know the deku tree and then making it out to hyrule field and just doing some of that stuff it was just a I mean, all of these kind of fall into this category for me of just like comfort games, I guess, because you're they have a very high level of familiarity. And so it's like when people go back and watch The Office for like the 80th time or whatever. It's a it's a comfort thing. It's like your safety blanket, I guess. And uh, Ocarina of Time was definitely one of those for me because I could just go back and it was like I knew everything that was happening and it was just a uh, super chill. So so, yeah, so that's my number three. Okay, so my number three is StarCraft. And this is the one with Battle.net because it came with Battle.net. Yes. And what the fuck can I say that's that hasn't already been said about StarCraft? Uh, probably not much. Uh, it's just, you know, when you're when you're not feeling too well or you're not, quote, feeling too well, this is one <laughs> of those games when you're at home from school and just log on to Battle.net. And again, this goes back to the custom maps which were far more easier to access on Battle.net because there was definitely that community then that came up with some incredibly creative stuff. Mm. So you just go on there, especially if you didn't want to do PvP or you wanted to do PvP in a special way. You could go on to StarCraft and you could play just unique experiences or you could tame up with uh, other players across the globe or at least across the United States. I don't know if it was across the globe. I have no idea what their uh, netcode infrastructure was. Who cares? But you could do it. You can go up against the computer. And it's just one of those things that uh, as special as a game that StarCraft was, if you were feeling sick, it was one of those perfect experiences where you could find something that was chill. You could find something that everyone was playing, just have a decent time where you didn't really have to exert your mental capacity 
all too much. It was just one of those games that could be really flexible to pretty much everybody of all skillables in the RTS genre for everyone that was a fan of it. So StarCraft was definitely one of those games that I would play when I was at home just because it's it's quick to pick up and play. It's quick to just do a couple of fights. It's always a good time. Yeah, StarCraft's from number three. Man, I played so many custom maps in StarCraft. Oh, yeah. I think I did custom maps more than the actual like competitive gameplay. I was never about like the competitive like base building stuff. I just I just wanted to play custom maps. Same. Absolutely the same way. Number two. All right. Number two. Uh so I bet if if you're familiar with my tastes in games at all, I bet hearing what my number two is you could probably take a pretty good stab at what my number one is but we won't spoil that yet so number two for me is turtles in time big surprise yeah big shocker yeah um i mean dude what i don't know man what can i say like i i was slash am a really big tmnt fan um that was a big part of my childhood and turtles in time not only is a Ninja Turtles property, of course, but it's fucking one of the best beat em ups ever made. So I played this a lot and you can beat it in like 25 minutes, you know? So, I mean, it's a great one for me to just sit down and, and blaze through like on a, you know, on a day when you're not feeling well. And the way that I had it set up at my house um, when I was a kid is that we had a small CRT um, I don't remember the exact size, but is is you know I'm gonna say maybe maybe 14 inch something inches. like that. Yeah, like that yeah, yeah, 12 or 14 inch I think. And um, we had the Super Nintendo, you know, and and a little bit later the N64 like hooked up to that thing in there, and it was in the bedroom. And so uh, the cords on those things were long enough that you know I could just lay in my twin size bed that I had in there and play Nintendo. And so. That's what I did, and so Turtles was definitely one that uh, that I would throw in pretty often, and uh, just just blaze through it, you know, in like a half hour. Um, so yeah, not not too much more I can say on that one. What about you, Chris? What's your what's your number two? So my number two is a game that could not be mainly played the same way today that you could play it back then. I'm sure you could with closed servers, but my number two is Fantasy Star Online. Mm. for the Sega Dreamcast. And this was really my first major foray into like anything that could be remotely considered to be an MMO. I may have played Ultima Online and EverQuest before that, but they didn't really stick with me. Not the same way Fantasy Star Online did. Like building communities, I would I don't remember if I had friends in there or not. I don't remember if you could make a friends list, but I just remember like I would put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours into this game. So I could imagine myself when I was sick and I had an internet connection logging on to Fantasy Star Online and just doing another doing another run. You know, just just grind to make whatever your bit was. I forgot what they were called. The, the thing that flew to, floated around you and uh, helped your abilities out and shit like that. And yeah, it was a fantastic time. It's a perfect time waster if you're sick because just it's essentially a, a dungeon crawler with repetitive gameplay for the most part. And I, yeah, that's that's what I would play if I were feeling sick during that time. It's a fantasy star online and just, you know, slaying monsters over and over and over again. Because again, not a lot of mental exertion really is just having a basic good time. So fantasy star online is my number two. Number one. So dropping in my number one slot, perhaps not coincidentally, because you just mentioned dungeon crawling. Can you guess what it is, Chris? Diablo 2. Duh. What? what? Why would you <laughs> say that? Uh, oh, not because it's Diablo 1? Predictable at all. Well, it's it's <laughs> technically both. I kind of, I gave it to both, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's It's kind of, you know, one or the other. It just depends on what the time frame was. But yeah, basically Diablo 1 and 2. That's my number one in what is a surprise to literally no one who's known me for more than like 15 minutes, I'm sure. But yeah, I mean, the only the only catch with this one, and I'm going to be honest, I actually debated about not even putting it on this list 
uh, just because I was thinking about the logistics of it, of like, if I knew that I was legitimately feeling sick, the, the air quotes sick is a different story. But if I was really not feeling well, um, I didn't always want to go and like sit at the computer, you know, I'd probably just want to lay in bed and do nothing. Um, so I almost didn't put it, but I know that there were times where I definitely just powered through whatever head cold I had or whatever to sit at the old compact presario in the, in the family room and fire up Diablo. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a really easy one to play, uh, especially the first one, because there's a lot less, uh, intricacies involved than, you know, like the skill trees and whatnot in Diablo two. So you could very easily, you know, roll up a new character and just dive right into the dungeon and just kill monsters and get loot. And that's pretty much it. So not a lot of thinking required, but it's still a good time. And yeah, so so that's it. Diablo takes my number one in, in more ways than one. Okay, my number one is a game, obviously. Oh, okay. I know. That won't shock many of you once you hear it. Because right now, as, as I have said in previous episodes, Chris, Chris, you've made it four choices so far and you haven't said Final Fantasy. Mm. What's wrong with you? And you'd be right, because my number one pick is a Final Fantasy game, and that's Final Fantasy Tactics. I think I started out sick after this game came out. I think it was 97, 98. I can't remember what, exactly which year. But when this game came out, like I was feeling ill, and I was playing it, and I was so addicted to it, I was, quote, sick for another two weeks. And... Uh, it was weird because my parents decided to never take me to a doctor. They just, <laughs> they were just like, yeah, yeah, we believe you. You're sick. And I just played <laughs> Final Fantasy Tactics for two straight weeks um, on wow. my sick days because I was so hooked to that game. Yeah, I know. Right. Adventures in parenting. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, first of all, it has to take my number one for that reason. Uh, second of all. It's it's a good game to play during a sick day because battles take a long time, but you have as much time as you need to make your choice. So if you fall asleep, if you're actually sick, you can wake up and not much will change unless your disc is scratched or whatever. And it's not too difficult with the exception of certain parts. So it's one of those games you can just kind of chill, have a really good time with. And you can't really understand the plot anyway because the writing is so awful. So just focus, at least in the PlayStation version, so just focus on having a good time and enjoy the battles, enjoy the tactics, enjoy the job class, which is phenomenal, and just have this really relaxing, addictive, just you're so sick, I can't do life right now situation while you play this game and listen to Rob Zombie, or White Zombie at the time, mm. or Metallica. And just zone out to the to the misery of your own sickness, of course. So Final Fantasy Tactics is my number one game. Awesome. All right. Well, you know, truth be told, I thought uh, I think we got a lot more mileage out of that than I thought. <laughs> like, hmm. listen, patrons, we love you all. Sometimes we question your decisions for these these topics because I, I never do. I, I will fucking I do. I'll go ahead and say that right now. But uh, but you're you know the best what? patrons in the world. We 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 pulled through. I just I I didn't really have a whole lot that I was gonna say about each of these. I was just be like, is a is good game. I play when feel bad. Next, please. But you know what? We did it. We're here. We we pulled through. Much like you do after feeling sick. Uh, yes. So yeah. All right. Well, now I'm just rambling. I don't do that that often. Well, uh, I suppose I should probably wrap this thing up, huh? I think you should. Okay. Well, uh, you know, what I usually say is uh, that we're glad to have you here. Yes, as I am wont to say, uh, we are glad that you are here, that you're with us, that you're listening to the show. Uh, if you haven't already, you could head over to Linktree slash Retro Hangover, as Chris mentioned towards the beginning of the episode, and uh, check out some of the other stuff we got going on. There is... 
the public Discord, where we have our monthly high score challenges always going. Right now, uh, at the time of this recording, it is Zevius. So, or I found out it's actually technically pronounced Zevius. So I've been Zevious. saying that wrong. So Zevius, everyone does. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Stevius. Yeah. So, uh, so Zevius. Anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a shmup. So if you want to come in and try your hand at that, then uh, you can head there. Otherwise, you could uh, check out the the Patreon or perhaps the merch store if you'd like to support the show in that way. Uh, we also do have the the socials, the YouTube, as well as the Twitch channel where we play Vidya games. And I believe Chris will tell us a little bit more about that, especially considering he's been uh, he's been on there a lot recently yeah so if you head over to switch.tv slash retro hangover you can find us there and subscribe or follow or whatever they do on twitch and we'll be playing video games of some kind on sundays at 9 p.m eastern time and you know just come out and hang out with us we have fascinating conversations about how buttholes taste and (laughs) all sorts of other things because why not uh, I've been playing recently a lot of the Forge Job Fiesta, so uh, they will randomly come up with episodes, but who knows what I'm doing now. I plan on trying to do a little bit more of that from time to time. So swing on by, check that out. I think Shane is going to start playing Lunar of the Silver Star after a successful campaign of defeating Eternal Blue on my part. So Shane, looking forward to your voyage on that, and we hope to see you all there on twitch.tv slash retro hangover. Shane. Yeah, well, technically I did start it, but I, we've got to get back to it. We had a little bit of a hiatus, and I don't really remember what I was doing. So, you know. It's fun. Yep, I'll have to get back into it. <laughs> all righty. Well, with all of that being said, until next time. I'm so sick, I can't even get it up joysticks. Wow. Wow.